We hear it over and over. Knowing how many people have the coronavirus or the antibodies is key to reopening business. Antibodies mean you likely had it and may have immunity to it, but there are real concerns about the accuracy of some of these antibodies. Skype is Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy, Democrat, 8th District of Northern Burbs. Congressman, thank you very much for joining us in Hour 18. You recently you, sent, yeah, absolutely. You recently sent uh, the FDA a letter concerned that many of these testing companies are making fraudulent claims. Yes, uh, in a departure from past practice, the FDA has allowed hundreds of unreliable and potentially fraudulent tests to flood the market. And the problem is many of them have high false positive rates, Brad. And what that means is that it could fool a lot of people into thinking that they have uh, the presence of COVID-19 antibodies and potentially immunity when they actually do not. And so they could relax their social distancing, go out, get sick and pass it on to others. So this is a very dangerous um, situation that we have. And so I sent a letter to the FDA uh, yesterday asking them to rescind this policy by next week um, because um, there are too many tests on the market that are uh, perpetrated by scam artists. We got to clear those tests off the market, have only authorized tests be sold. And then the FDA needs to put out precise standards for consumers as to what to do with the test results. How do you interpret them? What can and can't you do in your daily lives based on them? Yeah, that's a good point. Several good points. So there are dozens of different antib antibody tests available right now. A recent study looked into 14 of them, found 11 did not deliver results. That's nearly 80%. How are these ending up on the market in the first place? It's a great question, and basically the FDA in the past has only allowed um, authorized and t validated tests uh, onto the market. Uh, there are currently eight of them, and they are on the FDA's website. However, recently they allowed for another pathway for people to sell antibody tests, and 157 companies have taken advantage of that pathway. But here's the thing, which is that instead of requiring these companies to produce data that they would then validate, the FDA would validate, instead they are asking for self-validation and voluntary compliance. Of course, there's no incentive whatsoever for a junk test maker to comply. They're not gonna come forward with data showing that they're selling junk tests. And of course, um, uns unsuspecting consumers uh, know nothing of that. Self-validation and voluntary compliance sounds like a scammer's dream. So exactly, we know exactly. You're going to. It's like my. It's you're gonna like my wife and I uh, asking our kids to self-validate that they did their chores. It doesn't happen. Yeah, or brush their teeth. Exactly. So you said <laughs> again. The there are eight of them FDA approved, and they're on the FDA's website. So if someone wants to go to a doctor. They need to pre-ask and say yes. what specific, what are the questions they ask the consumer? Um, they should first of all go to the FDA's website. There are eight currently FDA authorized tests. They should write them down and ask their physician or their healthcare facility to administer one of those tests. But even then they need to ask, what do I do with the results of these tests? Because the science is still unsettled, Brad. Um, we don't know how much immunity these antibodies confer, for what duration, and what you can and can't do. Um, and so we gotta be very careful as we go forward. Yeah, we don't know yet what an antibody exactly does in the end game. So, uh, Congressman, we appreciate your time in hour 18. Keep us Thank posted you. on this one and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you, sir.